Daniel Kovac here with another quant finance tutorial using R. Today we're going to learn how to plot candlestick charts. Now there's a lot of modules in R that let you do this, but we're going to start from scratch. So let's get started. First I fire up my trusty terminal and I CD into a directory where I'm comfortable with dumping some data. So first I touch uh, or create the file name, uh, let's call it candlesticks.r, and create a directory for the graphs. So as we see here, those two things are created. Next, I use my favorite text editor to open the candlesticks.r file. This is going to be the script that contains all the information I need to render this graph. So what I'm going to do first is add a brief description of what this little script is going to do. This step certainly isn't mandatory, but it's a good practice and habit to get into, especially if you start adding more scripts to your toolbox. I like to add four pieces of information to this, something fairly brief, just the name of the script, uh, also the purpose or what it's supposed to do. In this case, we're rendering candlestick charts. Also, the usage or how I'm supposed to implement this file. Do I fire it up on the command line or do I include it in another script? And finally, a description uh, element, which is basically a little bit more detailed description of what this thing is supposed to do. Maybe any nuances that are in the script or any gotchas or something like that. Uh, perhaps a to-do list where I left off. But in this case, I'm just going to uh, tell exactly what we're going to do, which is pull data from Yahoo Finance and render it into a candlestick graph. So the first thing I do is just copy and paste the get URL function, which we talked about in the last tutorial. Next, I'm going to add the get data function, which actually pulls the data from Yahoo Finance from that get URL uh, function. Recall that the getURL function formats a URL for me to grab data from Yahoo for an arbitrary stock symbol or otherwise symbol of my choosing. So now I go ahead and close out that function and I'm going to use that getData function to pull data into a data frame for the ETF SPY, which is the spider ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index. If you recall from the last tutorial, I need to make some changes to the data frame before I can use it. The first change I'm going to make is to convert the column names to all lowercase, because by default, the column names begin with a capital letter. So I'm going to use the call names function and the two lower function to do that. Also, right now R thinks that the date column is just a string, so I need to use the asDate function to convert that to a date object. And now I can go ahead and sort that data frame with respect to the date, so that way the more recent dates appear later in the data frame. That's going to be really important for when I graph my function because I want the later dates to appear more to the right. Next I'm going to use the uh, slicing abilities of R to grab the last 200 days because as you recall from the last tutorial, R grabs me a lot of data from Yahoo Finance. Next I'm going to grab the minimum and maximum elements, that is the minimum low and the maximum high for that 200 day interval. I need those values in order to configure the plot window for my chart. So I use the min and max functions respectively to grab that information. Another thing I'm going to need for my graph, which we'll see uh, how that comes into play later, is a series of x values. So I'm going to create a vector of integers spanning from 1, or the first index of my data frame, to the last value of the data frame, which is at n row df or 200. I also want to create a color list so that I can color the bullish candles green and the bearish candles red. What's the condition for that? Well, if the close of the candle is greater than the open, that's a bullish candle, and that is colored green. Otherwise, uh, it's colored red. Okay, so that's pretty much all the information we need uh, in order to start this graph. So I'm going to add a little comment here uh, that tells us that this is where we actually plot the candlestick. First, I'm going to create a PNG file using the PNG function. There's JPEG functions and PDF functions and uh, all kinds of different functions for different file types. I just use PNG just because it's kind of my go-to format. First, I fill in the file name. I'm going to put that in the graphs directory, so I want to call it graphs spy.png. I'm going to have a resolution of 500. My height and width are going to be 
5,000 and 9,000 respectively. Those are just values I found to be aesthetically pleasing with respect to the dimensions of the graph. Then I turn the device off. That tells R to essentially close the function or close the handle. And uh, next I'm going to start my plots. So first I'm going to plot the highs of the function. I'm going to fill in some information into this graph as well, or the plot that is. So first I'm going to fill in the fact that it's uh, SPY. That's just the title. Uh, next I'm going to turn off the x-axis. We'll see why I do that later. Uh, the X label I'm going to leave blank, Y label I'm going to call the price because that's what's going to be plotted. For the limits of the graph I'm going to use my min and max functions. Next, uh, the type of graph I'm going to use, I'm going to put N, and that's going to tell R not to plot anything. We'll see why I do that in a second. Next I'm going to add a second graph for uh, the, the lows of the function. So what I'm going to do here is just copy the work I've done already and change the high to the low. And next I'm going to uh, delete this main because I don't want it, if, if I have a title here, it's going to clobber the previous title that I had. I'm also going to turn the axes of this function off. And again, this is because I don't want it to clobber that of the previous graph. Same thing with my X label, I don't want it to label anything, and also with the Y label, again, because I did that in the previous graph, and here I'm overlapping them. Again, my limits are the same, so I have the max and the min here, and also type equals n, because I don't want it to plot anything. The reason why I don't want it to plot anything is because I'm going to be drawing those bars by hand using the segment function. So first I'm going to draw the body of the uh, candlesticks and for this, this is why I need that x value vector. This tells R where to plot those bars and because I'm using the same value for x0 and x1, this is going to make that bar vertical and not slanted in some way. Again, since I'm drawing the body of the bar, I'm going to use the open and close of those values. And for the colors, I'm going to put in the color list. We define that in line 28 above. I use a line width of 4 because I want the body of the candle to be fatter than the wicks. Next, I move on to the wicks, and I basically just copy and paste my work from above, except I'm going to use the low and the high of the bar respectively. Notice that the x values are the same and also my color list is the same, but I'm going to change the line width to a 1 because I want that wick to be skinnier than the body. Finally, I'm going to add an axis label to the bottom of the graph. I use my x vector and tell R to plot as a label that respective date value. That's it for now, so I'm going to go ahead and save my work and exit out to a terminal so that I could fire up the script and generate a graph. And it looks like I have some errors. Uh, looks like I used LIM instead of YLIM for the Y limits or the range that my Y values will span. So I pretty much just have to go back to my function and make that correction. So let's save our work and try again. And it looks like I'm getting that error again. Yeah, that's because I have two graphs, or two plots. So I'm going to go back to my second plot and make the same change. Go ahead and save and get out to my terminal again. Let's try a third time. Third time's a charm. And null device 1 means I have success. So let's go into my graphs directory. You see the spy.png function. Let's go ahead and take a look. And it looks like it graphed correctly. One final comment about the date values, they're plotted horizontally. I'm going to go back into my R script and tell R to render them vertically. I do that by going into the axis function and adding the option LAS equals 2. Again, that tells R to render those values vertically instead of horizontally. That's it. That's all I need to change in order to make this happen. So let's save our work and try again. Good, no errors. Let's check out our graph. We succeeded in rendering the date values vertically, but there's way too many of them and they're crammed together and they're off the margin. So two problems. So let's go back into our script and correct those things one by one. First, we're going to address the spacing issue. So how I'm going to do that is create another vector for my x values. And this, this time I'm going to graph every fifth one. So I'm going to create a vector for that using the sequence function and go back into my access function and account for that 
in the at and labels fields. So now let's save our work and try again. Good, the spacing issue is corrected, but we're still spilling over the margin, as you can see on the bottom. So let's go back to our script yet again and correct that issue. Since by default those axis labels are spilling over the margin, I have to set that margin manually, and I do that using the par function, and I call the margin or mar parameter. This is going to be a vector. The first value is going to be my bottom margin. So I'm going to set that equal to 7 and set the rest equal to 3. Why did I choose those specific values? It's just because I've been doing this long enough to know that those values work for me. But feel free to play around with this and uh, see what works for you. Let's check out our graph. So this time we see nothing is spilling over into the margins and everything's spaced correctly. That's it for this tutorial. Feel free to take this code and make the changes you want to make. Uh, for example, maybe adding a moving average or some other indicator. Thanks again for tuning in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.